Nora Jones has sold more albums than any other female artist this decade, over 30 million and she's only 27. But success doesn't drive this low-key, talented singer. In fact, it makes her uncomfortable, as we discovered when we talked to her about this night four years ago, Grammy night, when many of us first saw the petite woman behind the unforgettable, seductive voice. That evening seemed like the coronation of Nora Jones, when at 23, she swept the Grammys. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a five-time nominee tonight, Nora Jones. I waited till I saw the sun. I don't know why I didn't come. I left you by the house of fun. It was a remarkable night. Her first album of romantic, dreamy ballads earned award after award. Miss Nora Jones! Including Best New Artist, Record of the Year, and Album of the Year. A stunning eight Grammys altogether. You and the album won in every single category you were nominated in. I felt really bad. <laughs> You did? I did. I felt like I went to somebody else's birthday party and I ate all their cake <laughs> without anybody else getting a piece. That's how I felt. Sunrise, sunrise. Looks like a year later, her second album went on to sell 10 million copies, proving her success was no fluke. Last month, we caught her in New York City, performing songs from her just-released third album. They have the signature Nora Jones sound, but unlike her earlier albums, she wrote all the songs and says they're more personal and edgier. I saw him stand alone under a broken streetlight So sincere and singing silent night But the trees they were full and the grass was green It was the sweetest thing little playfulness but there's also a lot of darker material on this album and that comes less from me being a dark person than me sort of observing things going on around me and sort of turning them into songs songs like my dear country which she wrote over two years ago the day before the election and nothing is a scary as election it's a political protest song that takes a jab at President Bush. Who knows, maybe the plans will change. Who knows, maybe he's not deranged. Were you nervous at all, Nora, about being Dixie chickified over this? No, it's more of a personal song for me. It's just a song about questioning what's going on and frustration. And I think that a lot of people would be able to relate to that feeling, especially from the past few years. You guys doing good? I promise we'll play some quiet, slow songs. <laughs> what am I to you? Quiet, slow songs are what first made Nora so successful. But some said they could put you to sleep, dubbing her Snora Jones. One critic wrote after your first two albums, mm -hmm. Jones's success is due to not being all that special. You can go to your local jazz club any night and maybe see somebody just as good. All the songs sound the same. There's nothing remotely experimental about them. The songs are, for the most part, fairly pedestrian. Mm -hmm. That's mean. Why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> what I was going for in the first two albums, I ne didn't necessarily achieve because I was young and because it was my first time out. And then the second album was such a quickie sort of, oh, let's just get it over with. <laughs> but the kind of music I make, there's a lot of subtlety in it. And I think it takes a couple listens to actually really get it. Pedestrian's a mean way of saying simple. Or accessible. Or ex they're very accessible. And the songs on my new album aren't as accessible. 
but I'm more proud of them. I put food on the table and a roof Nora says her musical roots are country and jazz. Tastes acquired growing up in Grapevine, Texas, listening to her mother's eclectic record collection. An only child, she was raised by a single mom who sacrificed to give her daughter every opportunity. Nora's father is the famous musician Ravi Shankar, the virtuoso Indian sitar player. I knew who my dad was. I saw him sporadically until I was nine. And then I didn't see him again or talk to him until I was 18. Shankar never married her mother. Their relationship, Nora says, was complicated, and it ended when she was young. Her mother, she says, didn't want her talking about him. It was kind of a secret. <laughs> yeah. Which must have also been strange for you growing up. You know, when you have a father who's pretty well known, but you don't see him, the last thing you want to do is start talking about him all the time to people. When Nora turned 18, she sought out her father, who was living in California with his daughter and second wife. When you reconnected, were you angry? You wanted him to say he was sorry. Yeah, I, I might have. I might have wanted that. Today, she says they are close. Do you consider yourself part Indian? I grew up in Texas with a white mother. <laughs> I feel very Texan, actually, in, in New York, New Yorker. Nora Jones moved to Greenwich Village when she was 20. It's a cool neighborhood to live in. When I first moved here, I actually moved to a little street called Jones Street. Oh, yeah, which that's is very appropriate. She waited tables and got gigs singing and playing jazz standards in small clubs. In less than a year, her musical career took off when an accountant for Blue Note Records came to hear her perform. She was signed and put out her first album, which she hoped would ultimately sell 10,000 copies. It sold over 20 million. You've sold more records this decade than any other female artist in America. And you did it between the ages of 22 and 24. Yeah. And yet, you say those were the worst years of your life. <laughs> they were, kind of. I wasn't my happiest. Her unexpected success plunged her into a relentless three-year whirlwind of touring and promotion. You guys are so huge. I've never seen a crowd this big. She says she was overwhelmed and cut back. You nixed a remix oh, yeah. of Don't Know Why. They did a remix of it, and it didn't make sense. I heard it was sort of... Don't know why, why, why. why. So kind of the disco version? It was just kind of silly. That's pretty unusual, though, because a lot of people say, hey, this is my moment. I'm going to take advantage of it. At the time, it had already surpassed my wildest dreams. And I said, you got to slow this thing down. You know, I'm dying here. <laughs> I just, I was really just afraid of being overexposed and overdoing it. It's great. In the spring of 2005, she took herself out of the spotlight and began performing in disguise. That's her in the blonde wig, singing songs you'd never imagine her singing, as a member of the all-girl band, El Madmo. We wear wigs because it's just fun. Yeah. And we didn't want anybody to judge us, you know, so we wanted to be more anonymous. So you dress up in yeah. kind of weird clothes? We wanted to be able to just try something out for fun, for the fun of music, you know. We ended up just enjoying the dressing up part as much as the band part. And then there's the Little Willies, the country band she plays with, named after her idol, Willie Nelson. Well, I just can't keep going along, making believe that nothing's wrong. It's wrong and it's always gonna be. When I moved to New York, I fell head over heels back into country music, and I probably because I missed something about Texas. Fans are made up of a close-knit group of longtime friends, including her boyfriend of seven years, bass player Lee Alexander, their songwriting partners, and he produced her latest album. Nora Jones is completely uninterested in the trappings and hype of high-profile celebrity. 
She doesn't dress provocatively and has made no attempt to sex up her act. She's unpretentious and unaffected, as we found out when she took us to her favorite pool hall in the East Village. I should tell you, I was captain of my high school pool team. No way. Really? No. <laughs> couple beers and then I'm a really good pool player. Hey, that's good. Really? Yeah, thank you. Thank I mean, you, you didn't much. sink any, but I like coming to places like this because they usually have a great jukebox. Now, do people bother you when you're out in public? Do they come up to you and say, no, not really. Not it's fun to go out and play pool when we're on tour. Oh, I know. Pardon me. Sorry. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Sorry, darling. <laughs> Nora Jones says she doesn't know where her career will go from here, and believe it or not, she doesn't really care. I don't expect to sell millions of records every time. I just don't think that's going to be possible. I think that's a lucky thing that happens every once in a while. I feel like I've had my cake, and I've eaten it, and it tastes great, and I don't need another piece. So what?